Hi, and in today's tutorial, I'm going to show you how to use the clone stamp tool in Photoshop. So I've just got this picture up here, which I have lots of opportunity to clone stamp and cover up things within this picture. So I'm just going to show you how to use the tool itself. So over on the left here, we've got the clone stamp tool here. Just click on it. And then you will be presented with a brush in the normal way. Now, across the top here, you've got some tools and adjustments. So if you go to this section here, click on the drop down. This is where you can select the type of brush that you'd like to use and also the size of it and also the hardness. Now, if you don't know, the hardness refers to the feathery, blurry edges that you will have with a brush or the hardness is where you have a very hard and solid edge around your brush. So you can make those adjustments here or if you hit the control and optional alt key on your keyboard, if I just hit those now, I move my mouse left to right, my brush will get bigger or smaller. And if I move it up and down, my feathering is increased if I go up and the hardness increased if I go down. And you can just see that by this red overlay. Now across the top here, you've also got your opacity and your flow. And I will talk to you about how those work within this tool because they are incredibly useful and versatile. So what is the clone stamp tool? Well, the idea of it is to basically take a chunk of your image and then copy it on another section of your image. So let's say, for example, we wanted to copy this strawberry. If I hit my Alt key on my keyboard and click my mouse into the center of this strawberry, and then move my brush, you can see I have a preview of what I'm about to clone. If I then take my mouse and just paint, you can see I'm making an exact copy of the strawberries. Now you might think, well, why on earth would you want to do that? Well, it's very simple. Most of the time it's to cover something up or to take something out of an image. But before I show you how to do that, I'm going to explain opacity and flow. If you don't want to know this because you already know, then do scooch forward to the rest of the video. So let's say, for example, once again, I wanted to copy this strawberry, but I only wanted a little bit of the strawberry. I only wanted a faint effect. This is normally used for blending when you have to blend things together. So opacity, if I take this down to 10%, let me just put that in, it's easier. If I take it down to 10%, what will happen is if I use my brush now, don't take the mouse away, but just paint, I will get 10% of the image I'm about to copy. If I can continue doing it over and over again, I will only ever get 10% of that image. If I take my mouse off, bring it back on, I will get another 10% on top of that. And again, do it again, and again, I will get another 10%. Now that's really useful if you want a consistency to what you're copying. Whereas if you have the flow, if you use the flow, Let's just take the opacity up to 100% and take the flow down to 10%. When I now paint, I'll paint one way. If I go back over, more of the image will come through. If I paint back over, I get another 10%. I'm not taking my mouse off, just painting backwards and forwards. And as I do so, more and more of that picture will come through. Each time it will add another 10% till you go to the full 100%. And again, that can be really useful for blending. So let's just undo that. And now I'll go ahead and show you how you can use this in practice. So what we want to do is to make a new layer, because obviously we don't want to go over the background layer because that can be very destructive and very difficult to undo. So let's just make a new layer by clicking the Add button here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to paint over the top of these circles so that you can no longer see them within the image. So let's just zoom in and I'm going to increase the size of my brush by again clicking on my control alt or option key, holding it down and moving my mouse to the left or right. And then in order to use the clone stamp tool, hit the alt key again. And what we're going to do is try to make this consistent to then cover up this bit here. So if we take a section here, click on it. Again, we can see the preview and then we can just paint over the top. Now, we talked about flow and my flow is currently set to 10%. And what that allows you to do is to actually just build up 
that image over the top. You don't have to go in for the full 100% every time. And sometimes it's better just to trial something at around 10%, just build it up enough so that you cover it. Sometimes 100% can just be really, really obvious in your image. And if we scroll out, it's covered it perfectly, but what you also have a problem with sometimes is that it can clone it so much, it's very obviously the same. And as you can see, we've almost twinned this section here with this section here, and it can look a little bit odd. So the way to get rid of this is to try to use little sections of other areas. For example, click over here, holding down your Alt key, and just paint a little section in here. Make sure the feathering on your brush is fairly good. So we've got a hardness of, let's say, 49%. And then we can just go in and just try to change the texture so that it doesn't look the same. And again, we can scroll out. And that's just changed that area a little bit more so it doesn't look like I've actually twinned it and completely cloned it from this section. So let's go over here and do the same. Let's grab a bit of this section here and then just start painting over the top. And you can see that if we continue in this way, we're going to have quite a distinction between this light section here and this dark section here. So before I just pull that over, I'm going to take a section of this dark area. Again, I'm still on 10% and I'm just going to gently build up that 10% darker picture over the top and just gently feather that in so that it covers it up. Again, let's do the same up here. I'm going to take a section here and once again just cover that bit up. Sometimes you don't have to just keep going over the same section. You can just grab little elements of other areas. There we go. Just move that over the top like that and then just zoom out. Let's just do this section over here. Again, just borrow from there. You can see where I'm borrowing from because the cross identifies the area that you're copying. Let's go over this lighter section. Perfect. And as you can see, we've got rid of those really well. If I just switch on and off that layer, you can see how we've covered those up using the clone stamp tool. Some areas can be a little bit more tricky and that's usually where shading is involved. So let's just go to this napkin here. So let's just say we have turned our flow up to 100 and we want to try to clone part of this leaf out. So I'll take this section here, I'll clone over the top and you can see we want the colour but the text is just copying it over and over again and it's very clony and it looks very, very obvious. Now, one of the solutions to this is another tool called the Healing Brush Tool. If you go to this tool here and click on the little arrow in the corner and go to Healing Brush Tool. Now, what this does, it will blend texture. It will take the texture you've selected, so once again, hit the Alt key, and I want the texture here to look like the texture here. So I'm going to click in this area and then it will blend the colours and the texture together. And this is a wonderful tool for blending. So as you can see, it hasn't copied the tone of the colour, so it hasn't got lighter. But what it's doing is it's just taking that texture. Now if I lift my mouse up, it will go back to the exact same spot that I'd cloned earlier. So what you do have to be careful of is yet again cloning the same area. So with this tool, you can move a little bit further afield and then lift your mouse up, select a slightly different area and then clone that section as well. Sometimes it needs a little bit of playing around with, but generally by the end you get the idea and you can see how things can be cloned out quite easily with this texture tool. And a lot of the time it is the texture that's the problem. You can clone stuff and it looks great, but it's just got all these swirly lines. And as I say, in particular, this can happen with walls in buildings. 
because generally you'll get shading across a wall, slightly darker, a little bit like this down here. You've got a darker section here, a lighter section here, and, and sometimes taking it from this area, moving it over to this area, it can just look so different in color. This tool is amazing to just blend texture. Okay, so though you haven't cloned a lot out there, you can get the idea of how this tool will work. So I hope that's helped you today. If it has, please subscribe and have a great day.